So very good evening, Africa, and a warm welcome to another dose of Wonder Woman in Sport. And we're doing it for the fans. Tonight we have double trouble on the show in the form of two phenomenal young women breaking boundaries in the golfing world. But before that, remember, we are interactive, so you can join in on the conversation. And this is how. Go ahead and like our Facebook page. We're also on Twitter at Quesa Sports. Use that hashtag WWS. We're on the gram, so check out our pics and our videos, not forgetting our website. Well, let's get down to business. It's our pleasure to welcome. Welcome to Wonder Woman in Sport, young golfing sensations, Kaylin McNabb and Kayuri Moodley. To the both of you, a warm welcome and thank you so much for leaving the greens and the fairways and the putting and the eagles and bogeys behind to join us right here in studio today. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thanks, it's great to be here. I want to know, golf, I mean, I think of golf and me growing up and it was not really an option, you know, uh, as a sport offered. Kaylin, for you, what was your first introduction or the first memory that you have that comes to mind right now about golf? I think just being on the driving range with my dad, um, watching him hit and using his long clubs, me, <laughs> tiny little <laughs> toddler, um, just trying to hit some golf balls. And I think just from there, I fell in love with it and sort of grown, grown off from there. Yeah. Okay, you and for you, the very first memory, I mean, are you still daydreaming about... <laughs> that first day when you met your first love called golf? <laughs> no, I am, you know, um, so my family and I, we're originally from Durban and my mom came home one day with a plastic set of golf clubs from Pick and Pay and I loved sports at the time, <laughs> I was so young, so I just hit the plastic ball from one end of the house to the other <laughs> and when we relocated to Johannesburg, my dad took me to the world of golf and would meet and they told me I had a natural swing, so I was like, why not? Let's just go for it and I enjoyed it ever since. Is it something that is in your family? I mean, I love the, the plastic golf set that you had. Do you still have it? Does it come I in handy so, at all yes. or not? No, okay, it doesn't come in handy. I think I do still have it, yeah. <laughs> but is it something that's in your family, in your DNA? Do you, like Kaylin, remember your dad on a golf course? I do, yeah. So my dad used to play golf with me. Before that, he never really knew what it was, but ever since I started taking it up, he would practice with me. And now that I've become a bit older and I, I need his time to like come with me to tournaments all over the place, and he's just stopped. But other than that, yeah, I remember him playing, definitely. Is it a dream, or was it a dream, from that young toddler watching your dad and thinking, I'm going to do this and I'm going to take it to the highest level ever? Or was it always just uh, something that I'm interested in and I want to do on the side? Um, I've always been so involved in, in all sports. I think um, from such a young age, I don't think I could say that it was a dream of mine from, from that young. I mean, three, three, four years old. Mm. But certainly getting into it and, and starting competitions, you definitely, you, 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 know. can, you can vision yourself being there and yeah. wanting to achieve that greatness. What yeah. is that vision? I mean, you light up just talking about it. <laughs> what is that ultimate vision that you have in your mind? Just being the world number one, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, playing RPGA, uh, winning majors, that's just such a, it's, yeah, it just brings me joy. <laughs> it gives me goosebumps that I'm not, I'm not anywhere close. But explain the, the relationship the two of you have, Kayuri, because she lights up talking about it, being number one, but you've got the same dream. Yeah. And you're both sitting here sharing the same platform in the same sport. I, do the claws not come out? Do the talons not come out? We're like, ah, <laughs> you know, now she's here too. And there's only really the spotlight for one at the end of the day when you think of world number one. It yeah. can't be Kayuri and Kaylin. Yeah, no, it can no, be one or the other. For sure. Yeah, no, you know, we, we share a very special bond. And with all the girls that we play with, we know that there needs to be one winner. But we're the same on the golf course and off the golf course. We are the best of mates. And... You know, there is, there is a vision for me as well. I also want to become world number one. But, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice to get there. And, sure. you know, to have all these girls around you, and, like, especially for me, having them around me and having their support. Because they may not have had a great day, but if I had a great day and I, I'm in contention to win, they'd all be there to support whoever mm -hmm. is going to win. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of relationship that we all have. And, you know, it pushes you there. It does. So, so would you say the two of you are best of friends, friends? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's sisterhood. Sure. I mean, do you liken, I mean, to what she's saying, that yes, it is, there's competition time, but there's also where, I guess, a family, home away from home. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, we see each other tournament in and tournament out. It's all the same group of girls. That's... When did you meet? 
Oh, when we were about three, four, four five, five years wow. old, yeah. yeah it's been a lot together, so it's been, it's been, it's a, been long a long time, time yeah. of, of yeah. seeing each other grow, of learning. Yeah. Yes, I for mean, sure. of sitting here as well. But you were telling me, uh, is it that support that you need? Um, and would you be okay without the support of these women around you? Uh, it's definitely something that you need. I mean, I often travel by myself to tournaments mm -hmm. and just having your friends around you that support you, they, your family away from home. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that you really do need and it's something that really helps you. Yeah. At 17 and 18 years old as you are, your family who back you, your fathers, which I think <laughs> is just phenomenal, the dads behind their daughters and pushing you to go all the way where obviously I guess men get more support than the women, especially in golf nowadays. The sport is growing, yeah. but take me into your household and the support that you get from both your mom and your dad to go and pursue a sport. Yeah, so you know, the, the, the support system at home, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, for me, I go to a normal school. So just having my mom there to back me up for the schoolwork and trying to push me to get the marks that I, that I deserve. Is and she strict? Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, just having everyone at home, my brother supporting me, even though he doesn't see me play, you know, just having his support and, you know, the whole family, it, it's, it's great and it pushes me. Is there no point where they're like, be a doctor or a lawyer or something other than venturing into, I guess, the danger of the sporting world? I think when they saw that I was enjoying the sport, I think they knew that that was meant for me. For me being a doctor or anything else, like I, I want to study psychology, I want to become a psychologist. So just when they saw how I enjoyed sports and how I enjoyed golf, I think they knew that that was what was destined for me mm. and they've accepted it and they've been supporting me throughout. Kaylin, you're in grade 11, but your schooling is different to that of Kayuri's, where you're homeschooled. Yes. So going from a normal schooling environment, if I could put it that, to homeschooling, how has that changed i guess your game uh, do you yeah. have more time for sport or why the change um at the end of the day it boiled down to missing school uh last year i missed 57 days of school wow. and i was at school for 59 <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually quite scary to think about that but i think the change for me was was just to to be able to balance it more um, school is so important you have to get your education but then for me golf is what i want to do mm -hmm. so um, if you stay in normal school, for me, something has to give. So it's either you're going to give 10% of your, of your grade average or it's going to be that 10% of your results on the golf course. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah. for me, it was, it was more to, so that I could strengthen both at the same time without, without sacrificing anything. Yeah. Is, it, is it hard? I, I mean, you come from different backgrounds where homeschooling versus going to school every day. Do you miss as many school days trying to give your sport your all and your schoolwork and then trying to juggle the two? Yeah, so going to normal school, it's, it's, been, it's been tough. Um, <laughs> it's been tough. And, <laughs> you know, last year I tried my best not to miss as much school. And even now, because I'm in matric, so for me, missing two, da two days, maybe even one day, they cover so much in the syllabus that when I get back, I'm so far behind. But, you know, because of the, the support system at home, you know, I catch up the work tr I try before I leave so that when I come back, I'm not stressing out because I get, like to get stressed very quickly. So, you know, going to a home school, it was an option for me, but I decided I have one more year left. You know, there was no point in me moving to a home school when matric is my most mm. important year. So just trying to choose the tournaments that I play, I've been very strategic in how that goes out. Um, making time for if I get chosen for international events, then those will be... I will go for those, but I would rather go for those. So it's about exactly. quality at the moment and not so much quantity, would you yes, say, in terms yeah. of you picking in your final year of schooling which tournaments you're going to yeah. participate in. How would you then balance that, um, being homeschooled? Is it a point where you can? Yes, it's 50-50, but I mean, the scale <laughs> does tip, right? <laughs> so is it more golf at the moment for you, Caitlin? For sure. Um, I think homeschooling definitely allows more golf. Uh, you're able to, so for instance, normal school, you have fixed dates for your exams and your tests. And for me in, in homeschooling, I'm able to um, adjust those dates. So there's a deadline that I have to write them by then, mm. but they're two months ahead of, of the time that they actually set. So I can, I can plan my, my year's work and I can take work with me and do work before mm. that mm -hmm. allows me to, to just 
play more events and play more golf. It seems like so much pressure. These days. <laughs> I mean, I'm stressed out just listening to the two of you trying to juggle these two. And isn't it too much, Kayuri? Isn't it too much for an 18-year-old in matric to try and juggle both of them? Uh, you want to be a psychologist. You want to be number one in the world. Is it not a little too much? You know, sometimes it does feel like it's too much, but it's just seeing the bigger picture in the end. For sure. Um, you know, we're both trying to get scholarships to America to study whatever we want to study, in my case, psychology. And, you know, that's the big picture for me. It's to get my marks good enough to get there. Um, and then, obviously, after that, as soon as I get there, the bigger picture is to get my degree and try and become, a pro like, a professional. Mm. Um, because I see myself doing golf for my entire life. So... We just have to look at the big picture and know that there are going to be sacrifices now, but at the end, it, the victory will seem so much sweeter. Psychology is definitely for her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen to that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Laser focus knows exactly <laughs> where she's going. It's all planned out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about a moment, though. I mean, it can't just be all fair and well, right? Is it definitely a moment where not. you struggled, where oh. you thought you weren't? going to make it where you were no longer going to play golf or whether going just really got tough and how did you move from that point to the next? I've never lost the the dream of well I've, I've never felt the feeling of not playing golf is a part of me it's who I am and it's what I was born to do. But it stands for gentlemen only ladies forbidden. <laughs> you did know this right? That's, that's, that's just true. The, yeah. sure. <laughs> no it's definitely uh, not something that, that people expect you to pursue. Mm. Uh, there are other sports, but golf is, is meant to be a gentleman's sport. Mm. And mm. That mm. is completely wrong. Girls are, women are. So it's girls only, lads forbidden. How do you like that? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the respect that women get on playing golf. Um, do men who come across you who aren't really, you know, golfers, look at you differently? Do you guys get that? I think. For me, they look pretty impressed. I'm not going to lie. They, because they know golf is a gentleman's sport, they don't expect a lot of ladies or women to be playing the sport and to do or to play as well. Mm. So, you know, I think they're just very impressed. And people that I come across every day that ask me, oh, you play golf? I said, well, yes, I do, because we're trying to break a stereotype that golf is for men and not for women. Mm -hmm. for sure. So we're trying to build up the, the women's golf in Africa, in South Africa, to try and get it to the level that the men is so that we can be seen equally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, in terms of um, the standard in South Africa, is it there, is it there in, in Africa? You know, the standard is there. You know, Kaylin and I went to the Annika Invitational in America uh, a few weeks ago. And, you know, the standard that's there, it feels exactly the same here. Playing with those girls felt like the girls that we play with here. And, you know, what made it tough was that the girls in South Africa, we know them very well. We know exactly how they play. We, we can see their swings on two, two holes in front of us mm. and we'll know exactly who mm. it is. With the girls that we played with in America, they were all different and we had to learn something from them. So I think the standards are there. Great. Well, we're going to take a very quick break. And when we come back, we hear about their, let's see, most embarrassing moments uh, in the golfing sphere. Do stay with us on Wonder Woman in Sport. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us on Wonder Woman in Sport. Don't forget, we're interactive, so go ahead on our social media platforms. Most embarrassing moments. You guys don't want to hear mine, but come <laughs> on. You have to have to share um, just an embarrassing moment, you know, in, in the name of golf. Kayuri? So I think I was probably about maybe seven or eight and my dad came with me practicing and he was chipping golf balls off the green and I was standing off the green, so he's passing the golf balls back to me. And I was looking in another direction, like there were people playing, and he, <laughs> caught, <laughs> he caught one out the middle, and it knocked me <laughs> in between my eyes. And I you started didn't fall over and fell, did you? No, actually, I just, I just started. I was shocked first, yeah. and then I started crying. <laughs> Um, and when I came home, and my mom looked at me and she's like, there's something different. And I'm, my eyes are red. I've been crying. You have a third eye. I have a third eye in between my eyes. <laughs> and my mom said that he'd never trust my dad with a golf club ever again. <laughs> or trust your dad on the golf on the course golf with course. you. <laughs> yeah. That is funny, Shane. Let's see, it's gone down it's after gone very down. many years. Yeah. Can't say <laughs> promise. Caitlin, for you? Uh, I don't have anything to that extent. Um, I think... 
I've just been but really... But Dad behaved with you. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, though. <laughs> um, I'd just say I've, I was playing and I was in, a, in one of the final groups in a big event, and I teed it up on the first tee box. There were a whole bunch of spectators around, and I did the worst thing possible, and I topped it <laughs> 50 <laughs> metres in front of me. <laughs> and everyone was just shocked, and I was, I was just in Did hysterics. you go bright red? Then? I was laughing. It was, I couldn't so you laughed? You laughed at yourself? Yes, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, could, I was shocked. Yeah, we yeah. like doing that. If, if we have a mess up of a hole, we just start laughing at each mm -hmm. other. Because yeah. <laughs> we don't expect it from, any, from anyone. So, <laughs> How would you encourage young women? I mean, watching, it sounds like a whole lot of fun, but hard work as well, to get into golf. If there is an inkling of any interest whatsoever is the information readily available I think it is you know the internet anything is readily available on the internet and for Africa there are a lot of initiatives that help girls golf and even young girls and boys as well not even just girls and when Kaylin and I started we started with something called SA Kids Golf and I think we started what at five five yeah, my yeah. First thing was five. so we started at five and we've We've been playing, or we have been playing that tournament since I was about 12, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the girls that we played with now, that we play with now, we met then. So we've all seen each other grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's key to see everyone grow because they're all supporting you and you're supporting them. And, you know, one day you hope to see them on the world leaderboard. So, you know, I think anyone in Africa, all girls, there, should, there are initiatives out there. What would you say your most valuable lesson that golf has taught you? I just think hard work and dedication. Uh, golf is a very lonely sport. Yeah. You're by yourself. Lonely in what sense when you're talking about the camaraderie and the support structure, almost like a safety net that you have in terms of, of your peers? Yes, for sure. But if, say, for instance, you play hockey, you have, you have that team supportive. Yeah. So although you might not be performing to your best ability on that day, you still have your teammates that can lift you up and you can win together. Mm -hmm. in, in golf, you're very... It's, you buy it's yourself you in your mind, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. You're by yourself, you're practicing by yourself, and it's, it's long hours. It's the, it's the entire day. So, um, yeah, it's just it's hard work, uh, dedication, but it teaches you, teaches you such valuable life skills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just camaraderie, sportsmanship. Patience as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure, patience. patience. You know, you can't, um, you can't get ahead of yourself. And like I've put myself in a few of those situations before. If I'm leading the day or the, on the last day, sometimes people put their themselves in front of what they're supposed to be doing, and their head goes way too far. Yeah, and you know, you end up at the end of the day, and you don't end up winning. Someone from behind came up and, and yeah, beat you. Yeah. So I think it teaches you patience, and you have to have a cool head because one. If you go off your head or if you get angry very quickly, people lose their respect for you. Mm. For mm. sure. Yeah. Mm. Where are you now? I mean, what is the next step in your golfing career? So for me, the next step in my golfing career is just to become a professional golfer, a woman's golfer. And at the moment, just getting through matric, getting the marks that I need to get into university, I've had a few university offers so far. Yay, that's great. Yes, yes. So I'm really excited and, you know, just getting the degree and then after that, that's a safety net for me so I can pursue my golf. And if something doesn't work out, then I have, I have my psychology mm -hmm. degree to fall degree. back on. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. Your biggest highlight to date? Um, I'd definitely say uh, representing my country at World Amateur Team Championships. Uh, it's the biggest amateur golfing event in that is out there yeah. um, and just meeting such phenomenal people and uh, just experiencing different cultures and playing on some of the world's best golf courses wow. is just mind-blowing it's so it's just awesome mm -hmm. uh, it gives gives me goosebumps every time mm -hmm. I think about yeah. it and just so so grateful and so so thankful that I've had the opportunities yeah who's your role model probably Ernie Els just because he's done so much for children's golf and his son's got autism, autism, so what he does to support autism charities and how he hold, holds fundraisers and foundations that help women's golf as well as junior golf in general by giving them financial aid, you know, so he's, he's done a lot for the country and he's been playing very well, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yours, I mean, somebody that you looked up to. Uh, Annika Swanson. Yeah. 
She's such a phenomenal person, mm -hmm. um, known as the greatest woman of all, of all time, greatest golfer of all time. And um, we had the honor of meeting her yeah. a, a few weeks ago in America. Yeah. And just what she's done for the game, uh, not only through golf, but giving back and uh, yeah, providing juniors with, with the tools that they need to be successful and giving back to a community is yeah. just unreal. So. so when you guys travel, are you traveling together? Is it a select few of you who do go? I mean, unpack the American trip for me. Apart from meeting one of your role models, what is the competition like? I definitely think, as Kayu said previously, um, that our standards of golf in South Africa are, are, are up there. Uh, we don't have as many players, and that is what I think differentiates South African golf with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. But the standard is there. I think the only thing that's different in America is the is the amount of players. You can be there on the day, and they all they all at that standard. So anybody in that field could win. It's just you that day. Whereas in South Africa, mm. there's five or six of us that, that, that will win the tournament. Chance, yeah. mm. Mm. I mean, you speak about the cultures and meeting people, which I'm sure in itself is amazing. And you all have this love for golf, but you have to let me in on who are the cuties, you know, in terms of the guys. <laughs> Who's the ones we should be looking out for? <laughs> oh. Definitely Italy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Italy, you Spain, you. you know, all the European countries, they <laughs> are the people to look at. Really? Okay. Yes. Uh, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, is it, is it because of the sport that I guess whoever, if it's male or female, you all gravitate towards each other, especially here in South Africa where it's perhaps a little less than in America, but the minute you're, you're in that circle of golfing gurus, if I could put it that way, that it's, it's just one big family. Yeah, you know, we connect very easily. We're very social people mm -hmm. and... We all have a lot in common. Yeah. yeah. In, in Annika, when we went to America, um, you know, we all just connected, even though uh, some of us have just met them for the first time. Kaylin was lucky enough to have met a few of the girls mm. before we got there, just from her going to other places overseas. And, you know, we just gel easily and you just make lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. So after a trip, let's say like the American one, and you come home and, you know, it's all golf, how do you unwind? Is there something other than golf that you do that you really like? Yes, for sure. Um, golf takes it out of you. <laughs> it's a year-long sport, so yeah. you're tired. Mm. Um, I love fishing. Uh, oh, wow. It's, just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not very girly, but uh, <laughs> I love fly fishing. Mm -hmm. I love being outdoors and just spending time with my family and friends. So even if it's a afternoon walk with my family, taking my dogs out, uh, I just love love that that calmness of mm -hmm. being being outdoors. And food wise, I mean, is there something diets, strict diets? That, and then when you come home, it's just like, uh, I just want <laughs> whatever I want. Is, is it like that? No, uh, golf is a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so it is very demanding. Uh, people don't understand how fit you have to be it's yeah. long hours and you're training hard, so it's... Yeah, you need the endurance. Yeah, mm. for sure. It's hours in the gym and it's a, it's not a strict diet, but it's, it's more of a lifestyle. So it's just, yeah, everyone, everyone you're has You're not pigging a... out <laughs> no. once in a while? No. <laughs> everyone, everyone has their chocolates and ice cream yeah, yeah. here and there, but it's not something, yeah. you're not having it every day or mm -hmm. yeah. twice a week. It's, 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 so yeah. it's all about the discipline at the end yeah, of the day sure. in order to take it to, to the highest high uh, which you want to do. Mm. I mean, for you, unwinding, is it another sport? Is there something else that you do? No, I actually play rock drums. Oh. Um, I play drums, I do public speaking as well. So those take also a lot of my time. But you know, I'm very rhythmic. I like listening to music that's got rhythm and I'm so into the rhythm that I, I just started playing drums and it kind of, it relaxes me just because I know that my mind is off something else other than golf and school. Mm. So it's quite calming, yeah. Is there something that you do um, before any tournament? A mantra? Uh, I guess maybe even getting out the bed with your right foot to see suspicious <laughs> at all. But is there something that you do or that you always do or that you lean on prior to big competition? I, for me, I always practice with music on. As I said, I love music. Mm. And 
Um, you'll always find me, whether I'm practicing or whether it's the day of the big tournament, I'll always be on the driving range with my red earphones oh, on, yes. with my sunglasses <laughs> on, and that's just how people know that it's me. Yeah. So that's kind of what I go to. Signature style as Signature well. Style. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and you? Um, I'm very... I stick to my routines. I'm, so you're very routine-oriented? I'm very routine-oriented. I'm, I'm not superstitious at all. I don't have any superstitions, but I, I stick to my routines. So... Uh, I allow myself 10 minutes in the morning to greet everyone. I extend my practice routine <laughs> to greet everyone. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just it's the same every single yeah. time. So if you could shut your eyes and tell me how this all is going to end, as much as you're friends, but you're in competition with each other as well, how would it go? I mean, take me through that day where you become the world's number one. You know, I think it's just we all know that the camaraderie when we're on the golf course it's there, but it's not as strong as it would be off the course. And we all know that we want to be number one. And, you know, we'll be focused. But the whole point of playing golf is that you'll be friends on the golf on the course too. And, you know, you'll be serious and concentrated to hit your shot. But after that, you'll be chatting away with each mm -hmm. other, still being the friends that you are. So I think it's just that kind of connection. But who's going to be there on that day? Is your mom going to be there? And your brother, yeah. and is that how you envision it? Yeah, the entire family, family. Yeah. with the your family. red <laughs> headset. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you dream about that day? Because for me, dreaming is all about that visualization. Yes, you know, for sure. at the end of the day. So, do you see that top of mind yeah. as clear as day, and how it's all going to go down? Yeah. For sure, I, I, I envision myself um, obviously competing and being up there all the time. So you. To get to world number one, you're obviously climbing up the rankings. So mm. being at world number two, say for instance, and playing that major, say the US Open, and sinking that last putt to win and holding up that trophy. And everybody goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that, that vision is just really clear in my head. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Uh, ladies, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much for coming through to Wonder Woman in Sport. And you do know where to come, right? With that trophy, eventually <laughs> when it is that you are the world's number one, once you have your degrees and you get your scholarships, this is a place that we'd really like to have you. Thank, Thank you very you much so for much. having us. More than welcome. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap from Wonder Woman in Sport and me, Romy Titus, and the team. You know where to catch us next week, Friday. So until then, cheerio.